Hello everyone. Today's video is because of an email I received from Anton over in Ukraine. He wanted to share with me his website on nonogram puzzles, which was originally created for a Russian speaking audience. But once the war started, he began the process of translating the website into English to reach a wider audience. I wasn't sure what a nonogram was, so I took a look at his website and here you can see it at jcross.world and wow, there's a lot going on here. I recognize this type of puzzle. I think it goes by other names, but I haven't tried to solve one of these in many years. So let's have a look at his website. You can choose between easy, medium, or hard, and you can choose the size of the puzzle, and you can choose whether you want it in color or in black and white. So let's click on an easy one and let's see what it says. And not having any clue what I'm doing, I think I'm going to have to click on the tutorial button. But before I go to the tutorial, let's have a look and see what Wikipedia says about nonograms. And yes, it does go by other names. Hanji, Paint by Numbers, Pick Cross, Griddlers, and Pick a Picks. One of the inventors of this puzzle was Nan Ishida, and that's where the name nonogram comes from. Okay, back to the tutorial. A nonogram is a picture logic puzzle. I love logic puzzles. In which cells in a grid must be colored or left blank according to the numbers at the side of the grid. And once the grid is colored in, it reveals a hidden pixelized picture. This example shows a question mark. It says here that initially all the cells are empty, although I think I remember some of the grids having cells already filled in, which the tutorial calls painted in. So which cells can be painted? Okay, let's see. Look at the numbers above. Each number shows how many cells can be painted continuously. Okay, so this one has a six. That means six of the cells need to be filled in or painted in, in the first column down. And then the next one has a one and a one. So there'll be two cells painted in, but not next to each other, right? There has to be at least one space between them. So starting with the largest number, the six, there are eight cells in that column. So the six painted cells can go in a few different places, but no matter how they will go, there are overlapping cells that must be painted in. And to figure out which those are, count six cells from the top and paint that cell. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this one, paint it, and then count six from the bottom and paint the last cell there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Paint this one, and then fill in these cells in between. So these four cells have to be part of the six. Now we don't know which the other two are, above or below, or one and one. We don't know but we know that these four are for sure part of the six. Okay, let's see what it says here. Rule number one, always paint only those cells that you are 100% sure of. No need to guess anything, that's good. Okay, let's move on to the left panel with the numbers three and one. So that means that first there will be three cells painted in, then at least one space, but maybe more, and then one cell painted in. So if the first number is three and we already have one cell painted in, then I can paint the remaining cells so that there are three cells painted in. Okay, reading here, it says, in the left panel, click on the number three to cross it out. So that's so you don't forget that it's already painted in. And so if you click on the three, it grays it out. Rule number two, always cross out painted numbers. Okay, so that's what we did. In some nonogram apps, you can click on the white space after the painted in cells, since that has to be left blank. There always has to be a space after a group of painted cells. Let's see if the tutorial mentions that, 
Meanwhile, there's also a number one in the row. We don't know yet where it goes. It can be in any of these four spaces, but it cannot go here. The only thing we can be sure about is that the next cell after three cannot be painted. Click the right mouse on that to cross it out. There you go. So you can cross it out and it's crossed out. Congratulations, now you learned another important rule. Yay, another rule. Rule three, always cross out cells that you are sure will not be painted. Once again, no need to guess anything. Okay, you've learned the main rules for nonogram solving. There are only three indeed. One, paint only those cells that you are 100% sure about. Two, cross out painted numbers. Three, cross out cells where nothing can be painted. If you don't believe that it's all you need to solve a nonogram, let's finish this nonogram without using any other rules. Okay, let's try it. Here we have a one, one, three, and then below it we have a one and a three. So since there has to be a one as the first cell, and there's already one cell filled in from before, we know this is the one, and then the cell after it has to be blank, so we can cross that off. And then this row is a one and a four, so the first two cells cannot be part of the four, they can be part of the one. So if these first two cells are excluded, then we can count from here, one, two, three, four, paint that in, then from the right we can count one, two, three, four, and paint that in, so now we know that these two cells are part of the four, and we don't know which other two cells are the rest of it, but we know that these two are part of the four. Next we have four and two. Paint three cells out of four, also one cell out of two. Okay, so starting from the right, if these two are the two at the worst, and then this is the space, one, two, three, four, paint that in, and then from the left I can count one, two, three, four, and paint that in, and then paint the cell in between. So now these three cells are part of the number four, and the remaining cell can either be this one or this one, but in either case this cell is not part of two, so the two is either these two or these two, so this cell for sure has to be part of two. Okay, what does it say here? Look at the top panel, cross out two or one, and cross out cells in between. Oh, okay, since we already filled in, or painted in as they say, the two ones, we can cross out those ones and all the cells not painted in in that column. And it says, paint five cells, cross out numbers, and cross out cells. Okay, so in this column, we have a five and a one, and the one is already filled in, so the cells before and after that one can be eliminated or excluded. So there are only five cells left, and I can fill them in, I can fill them all in. And now I can cross out the five and the one. All right, next, cross out the last one and cross out two cells above it and below it. Okay, so since this column is one, 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 and the last one is done already, we can cross out that one and cross out the space below it and above it. Now look at four. Since the next cell's already crossed out, it becomes clear that the last cell of four is going to be on the left. Paint it and cross out number four. Okay, so that makes sense. Since we crossed this out and this out, now we know that the two has to be here, and then this completes the four, and that's because we crossed out these cells. So crossing out really helps, and now I need to cross out 
the numbers 4 and 2. Now you can finish painting 6. Also cross out number 6 and cross out cells. Okay, so since I painted in this cell and the 6 has to be contiguous, then I can paint in the rest of the cells and also cross out the 6. Oh, and it also wants me to cross out these cells. Good idea. Almost done. Try to finish the nonogram by yourself. Okay, I'll try. So what do we have here? And there's a 1, 4 in this row. The 1 is done. Let's cross that off. And then the 4 can be any of these cells to the left or right of the painted cell. So there's nothing I can do there. This row has a 1 and the 1 is already done. So I can go ahead and cross that one off and cross off the rest of the cells in that row. This row has a 1 and a 3. The 1 is done. And the 3 can be any of these cells, but there's no way to know which. So let's move on to the row above that. And we have a 1, 1, 3. So the first cell is a 1. We have that. Then there's a space. And then the next two cells can be the next one and a space. So counting from the first cell that a 3 could go into, 1, 2, 3, we can paint in this cell. And from the right, 1, 2, 3, we already have this cell painted in. So we have two out of the three cells painted in here. That's great. The next row up is a 3, 1. And we have that already painted in. So let's cross that off. And then we have a 1, 3. The first two cells are crossed off already. And then the 1 could be in the next two cells. So counting from the left, 1, 2, 3, I can fill in this cell. And from the right, 1, 2, 3, this cell is already filled in. So again, we have two out of the three cells filled in. And finally, the top row that has a 3. And I'm not sure what I can do with that. So let's look at the columns. And the first column with a 6 is done. The second column, 1, 1, is also done. And then next we have a 3, 1. The 1 is done at the bottom, so I can cross that off. And then looking across that row, I can now narrow down where the 4 would go in this row. Since I crossed off an empty cell, I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, and I can paint in this cell. And so now I have three out of the four cells painted in in this row. Okay, back to the columns. This one has a 1, 1, 2. So the 2 has to be the last two cells since the last cell is already filled in. And that takes care of the 4 in the row above it. Now I can cross off this cell and cross off the 4. Done. Back to the columns, we took care of the 2, but the 1, 1 could be any of these cells, so I'll leave that alone for now. The next column is a 1, 1, 1, and the last one is already filled in, but there's no way to know yet where the other ones go. So let's move on to the next column of 5, 1, and it's done already. Next we have a 1, 1, 2, and that's also done. So let's cross off all the cells and the numbers. And then we have the last column, 1, 1, 1. And the last one is done, so let's cross that off. But the other ones I can't place yet. And now I see the top row, the 3, is resolved. I can paint in the remaining cells and cross off the spaces that are left in the row. And so now, this one in the fourth column is placed, so let's cross that off. And this three in the third column can be narrowed down a bit more. One, two, three. This can be painted in. So I have two out of the three cells done. And then the third one can either be above or below the ones I filled in. I'm not sure about that yet. Now looking across this row, we have a 1, 3, 
the three will be in the last cells on the right, but the one has to go here. There's the only place left for it. That's the only place left for it. So let's fill that in and cross off the one. And so now that resolves the three in the third column and I can cross off that as well. And this row has a one, one, three. So this cell needs a space after it. And then that resolves the remaining one in column four. It can only go here and I can cross that off as well. All right, this is coming together nicely. There is a one, three in this row. So we have the one, so this must be the three. Let's fill that in and cross off the three. And we have this column, one, one, one. So I can cross off all the remaining cells in the column. And it looks like we're almost done. There's even a picture starting to emerge. And it looks something like a head with a body and two eyes. So now we can resolve this one, three. The one is done. So this must be the three. Let's paint that in. And then we have in this row a one, one, three. So the last three cells must be the three. And so let's fill that in. And we did it. Yay. So that's it for our first lesson on nonograms for both you and me. Thank you, Anton from Ukraine, for sending me your website and for giving me the inspiration to try nonograms again. That was a really fun tutorial and very well done. Thanks everyone for watching and as always, I hope you learned something.